So selling your gold and silver now is a really good time to actually liquidate a lot of this. It's very popular. People will buy an awful lot of silver and people will buy gold if it's priced at the right price. But how do you do it? There are a lot of pitfalls. There are a lot of different things that you might have to factor in. So today I want to share some of my thoughts and opinions, tips, hints and tricks on the selling of gold and silver. everybody, Backyard Bullion here and a warm welcome to you all joining me for another Precious Metal Ramble. Now today I want to share a few of my insights into the world of selling precious metals. We all buy precious metals, certainly if you've watched this channel enough you've probably bought some, but every now and again you might have to sell some. While some of you out there will never sell, never part with your silver over your cold dead hands, it is unfortunately for other people sometimes a necessity and it can be a little bit more tricky than a lot of people think. You often go, ah, it'd be easy, I'll just quickly sell it and job done, money in the bank. But there is work to be done on some of the silver that you might sell. And the same can be said for gold as well. And we've got a beautiful array of sovereigns down here on the table um, whilst they're in my possession for only a short time because these are intermediaries for other people. These are already sold. And this is an example of how, as a seller, it can be difficult to sell a lot of your stack if you ever needed to. So tips, hints and tricks today. I'd love to know your thoughts and hints down in the comment section below. So please do feel free to comment with those opinions. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. So selling. Now, it is maybe a lot easier than some people might imagine. You can go to dealers and you can get prices. You can go to pawn shops and get really low prices, but you can, you know, this stuff is real. It's valuable. It has monetary value to it. So you can get your cash out quite easy. Now, how much cash you can get out is down to each individual's person's personal circumstances and also how long and how much work they're willing to put into things. So you've got to think about it. In, I, I always think about it like this in terms of labor costs. If you're looking to sell, I don't know, let's just like these one ounce bars here and you are just some random guy on the internet or on a forum somewhere and you've got no history of selling this. It's difficult. It really is. Like you put a listing up for these bars. How are people going to know they're genuine? How are people going to know that you're genuine? How do they know they're going to get their goods if they, if they pay you? It is very difficult to do. But if you put in the work, if you try very hard, if you maybe do a few leaps of faith, if you're in a community like on the Silver Forum, and you do a sort of community post there um, where you're able to send coins out to somebody before payment, it shows good faith and it's a reputation that you then start to build for yourself. You know, we all start somewhere and I started somewhere. I started over on the Silver Forum buying and selling little bits here and there. And I would not be where I am today to the point where somebody would send me 19,000 pounds worth of gold sovereigns just on the chance that I would act appropriately. You know, as I say on the chance, of course I would have act, I act appropriately. But the point here is that the person that was looking to do this trade needed an intermediary, needed somebody to sort of check and verify everything and make sure it was all above board. And that's what I did, but that's not easily done. And of course I charge a little bit of uh, money for my time and experience doing that. So when you're looking at selling stuff, you've got to factor in your labor. And a lot of people don't necessarily do that. They think, oh, it's fine. I'll just list it for what the dealers list it at. And it'll be easily done. Price, job, easy. People don't think about the legwork that you've got to put in before. And then the actual act of selling this stuff as well is quite laborious. So, um, you know, if you've got a bunch of these bars, like, I mean, I'm just about to start packing them all up for everybody. Here we go. There's a sight to behold. If you've got a whole bunch of these little one ounce bars and you're looking to get them all sold, what are you going to do? You're going to try and find one person. You might get better prices if you split them up and sell them individually to lots of different people. You might sell um, things a little bit easily generally if you split things up. Think about it. Like if you've got 200 of these bars, you know, finding one single buyer to buy them all is much more difficult than splitting it up and finding lots of different people with little bits of money. Um, so then you've got to package it up. You've got to buy packaging. What kind of packaging do you use? There's loads of different questions when it comes to this stuff. All of this is something that you need to factor in. Now, when it comes to, I'll talk a little bit about packaging. Packaging is important. So I use a lot of these please do not bend envelopes for 
small things, so if it's just a small gold coin like this that's not in a big lumpy capsule, I'll put it in one of these, but I will secure it in there with another piece of cardboard so that it's, you know, you can't feel it. If for uh, other sort of larger items, I use little cardboard boxes, and uh, these are so much better than jiffy bags. I really, it's one of my big pet peeves when people send me coins in jiffy bags because they are so easy to get into. So, you know, jiffy bag, just a quick knife slash across it, get the contents out, nobody's the wiser. This box, which I then wrap in brown paper, if somebody's tampered with it, you'll know super quick. Certainly the postal service will know. Uh, and then I use slightly bigger boxes as well for the even bigger stuff. We'll have to even zoom the camera out to um, see just how big this box is. So it's a nice big one uh, that is deeper as well. So yeah, there are definitely a lot of factors to think about when you're selling. Um, what if things go missing in the post? You know, all of these questions. So you're working for your extra cash. So the point here is if you take a sovereign and you want to sell it uh, to a dealer. You go to a dealer, at the moment, they'll probably offer you about 350 pounds for a sovereign, which is about spot price for a sovereign at the moment. If you go to uh, the private second-hand market, you're more likely to get something like 370 pounds for it. I've seen sovereigns go for sale on the forum for higher than that and sell very quickly. Uh, that's the price at which it's a good deal for the buyer because they you know, are undercut, being undercut by the deal, or the dealers are being undercut, I should say. So it's about pricing, but for that 20 pounds extra, You've got to find the buyer yourself. You've got to do all of the packaging, the wrapping, going to the post office and so on. And you also got to take the risk of the item being potentially lost in the post and also the potential for buyers to scam you. So a lot of people are very wary of, um, of sellers generally, but in my opinion, most sellers are pretty genuine. There are of course some that are not, but for example, on eBay, most sellers of gold coins are pretty genuine. If there are genuine gold coins, there are definitely people out there who chance it by selling fake gold coins. But most sellers are genuine. It's the buyers that you need to watch out on, for on platforms like eBay. You know, they can just quite easily turn around and say, yeah, no, it didn't come. Or if you send it in a jiffy bag, they just quickly slash the jiffy bag open when it, they get it and then take a photo and go, hey, look, your jiffy bag's all broken. So there's things there. So that's why, for example, going to a dealer is a much better option because it's just done. There's no risk, money's in the bank. So yeah, you might be on this particular deal here with 50 gold sovereigns, 50 times 20 quid, what's that? And uh, 50 times 10 is 500, 1,000 pounds down. You might lose 1,000 pounds in potential earnings. You could sell this to a dealer for 18 grand, or you could sell it privately to individuals for 19,000 pounds and get more in your pocket. Definitely worth thinking about. That 1,000 pounds sounds like a lot of money, but all it takes for 1,000 pounds to be wiped out is three of the 50 gold coins to be fraudulently you know, sold or um, gone lost or buyers claim they're not there. So yeah, selling is tough and it can be quite tough to factor in all of these things, which is why a lot of the time you see people price things in really high ways. I've seen people you know, pricing regular bullion sovereigns at 400 because they just you know, the extra cash makes it more worth their while. But they don't sell, that's the thing. You know, you pr if you wanna sell something, sell it. Just sell it at the price that it will go at, it'll get gone. And that's what my selling service is all about and to help mitigate some of those factors. Uh, now we offer, um, you know, the selling service in terms of taking things like these bars, listing them for sale, and then I do all of the wrapping, packaging and everything. But like these 50 gold sovereigns, we also offer this just flat intermediary service where if you've got that trade already done and already agreed, and you just want to send me the coins to check them over, make sure everything's okay, and then once everything is okay, the buyer can send the funds to the seller. That way there's no possibility of buyer being scammed and no possibility of the seller being scammed as well. It's very, very easily done. So yeah, it's, it's an interesting time right now for selling. I think it's a lucrative market for some if you can put the work in to get that reputation. You know, I look at um, what I've achieved in this last sort of eight years, seven years of YouTube, eight years of stacking. And at the beginning, could I have taken this much silver and gold and sold it? No, of course not, 100% no. My options when I got started stacking was to buy it at the premiums that you bought it from and then wait for the spot price to go high enough to sell it back to the dealers at spot price. That was my plan when I got started. And um, it's in fact what I did very first sovereign that I bought. I, I really regret this. I bought a sovereign off um, eBay of all places and um, 
here's a little backyard bullying bonus ramble story for you. Bought a sovereign back in 2015 off eBay and it was 158 pounds. 158 pounds for a sovereign, it was ridiculous. I could not believe it. Well, now I couldn't believe it. Back then it was a lot of money. It was even then a premium. It was, you know, spot price equivalent sovereign was about 148, something like that. So when I bought it, um, it was a big commitment for me. One coin, 150 quid, bloody hell. Anyway, so I, um, I eventually sold that coin. The biggest regret I've ever had because I sold it for about 190 and got a profit, okay? You know, I got a profit like 30 quid. I was like, this is so good. I've made profit on my investment. I made like, you know, 18% return or whatever I worked it out. It's fantastic. I should do more of that. And so then I did and bought more of that. But then of course the sovereigns cost like 190 quid and then they cost 220 quid and then they cost 300 quid. And now they cost 370 quid or more if you buy them new and it's, yeah, it's just one of those very interesting tales to tell. So anyway, that's my uh, ramblings on today's subject. Thank you all for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Hit that like button. And if you are in the Backyard Bullion Ramblers Society, a cool kids club member, thank you. I do love and appreciate all of you for watching. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.